Quick Dick McDick coming to you from Saskatchewan here today with a Quick Dick McDick Tooney where you get $2 worth of my opinions because two cents don't buy very much anymore. Today, we are talking about Justin Trudeau's Canadian ban on fertilizer. Now, this is a Tooney. This is my opinion. I might swear a little bit, and to be honest, my voice is kind of giving out on me some, so we're going to keep this short. But let's go. Now, first things first, folks, to be perfectly transparent, no matter what you're hearing, in Canada, this is not a ban or a mandated reduction in fertilizer like what we're seeing in the Netherlands yet. What this is is a goal. It is a goal that has been set by the federal Liberal government to achieve a 30% reduction in emissions from fertilizer use, namely in nitrous oxide, which is created when fertilizers either soak into water or soil. It's an emissions reduction goal. Does that make you feel better when we say it like that? It's an emissions reduction? Well, I'm here to tell you folks that nothing about what's being said here should make you feel good. It should make you feel concerned. Because whether you work in agriculture, oil and gas, mining, forestry, maybe you're a hairdresser, maybe you're an entrepreneur in the restaurant industry, maybe you're a vegan, maybe you're gluten-free, it doesn't matter. If you eat, consume food, this will affect you. Our government in this extreme climate cult that we're dealing with would have you believe as a citizen of planet Earth that we're out here slowly killing the world with fertilizer use. It's like they think we're the second act of Zoolander, but instead of having gas fights, that we're out here at Clearview having anhydrous ammonia fights with each other. Come on! Are there people out there that think we're here just having some kind of a crazy fertilizer giveaway program? Free fertilizer, come and get it. We'll fill up the box of your pickup truck, the trunk of your car, wherever. We just want to give it away. Use it wherever and however you want. Or there were some kind of a dealer that's trying to get our crop hooked on meth so it can ruin its finances, its teeth, and its small town. Except instead of meth, we're trying to get our crop hooked on fertilizer. Hey, y'all ever hear any of this fertilizer stuff? Yeah, no, I know you don't need any, but maybe I'll just give you a little taste for free. And then if you want some more, you just come on back to me. I got a never ending supply of it. Then the climate change is a global crisis, cult says, but quick dick, it's a proposed reduction in emissions, not fertilizer, while you're trying to manipulate the way everybody thinks. Well, here's the thing. You people need to come down out of your ivory fucking towers and visit us on a farm and you would find out that reducing fertilizer use by increasing its effectiveness has already been happening on farms here in Canada for years and years and years. This is how we're doing it. We work with specialists. I do not know one farmer that doesn't work with one or several agronomists. Soil testing? rotations, nutrient management, chemical applications. We work with professionals to ensure that as our crop grows, we are using the least amount of inputs to get the most amount of output out of our land. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars investing in new equipment and technology. In the last five years alone, your mind would be blown if you could see the amount of technology that's come into the agriculture industry, mostly dealing with mitigating product waste. We now have equipment that is fitted with variable rate control, sectional control, and on top of that is GPS guided for precise accuracy. So with those tools, you take a detailed crop analysis from the previous year. Then you take a topographical readout of the moisture conditions on the field that you're headed back to. You take the soil sample from said field and you make a plan with your agronomist to use the absolute least amount of fertilizer that you are going to need to make that crop grow on said field. And then you apply that fertilizer using the 4R stewardship that we all know here in agriculture. The right fertilizer, at the right rate, at the right place, at the right time. This is already happening in Canada without the government getting involved. Crop rotations and biodiversity. Now here we have a crop of field peas, which is very important because field peas require zero nitrogen input because they make their own. That's why they're a very important part of a crop rotation. Plus, look at all the neat places that wildlife can hang out around here and come in and have a little snack on our dime. Now here we have a field that was obviously canola last year that was underseeded to alfalfa. This half section is gonna spend a four year rotation as alfalfa because like peas, without getting too complicated, alfalfa will naturally return nitrogen levels to the soil and help with soil health. Then we're gonna take this alfalfa that we harvest off of here and feed it to cattle in the winter time who make manure, which last fall was spread onto this canola field and this oat field, where we used, wait for it, 
30% less nitrogen fertilizer. Pretty neat, eh, Justin Trudeau? Actually, you can check out this video that I made. It's about the biodiversity of cattle and how they're an important part of farming here in Canada. Did you know that in the National Inventory Report that Canada, for some reason, submits to the United Nations Framework on Climate Change, that fertilizer emissions in Canada are estimated using the formula emissions equals fertilizer used times the emissions factor. See, the problem here, folks, is that emissions factor is actually an estimate on certain emissions that could be reached in specific climate zones that are not specific all the way across Canada. And fertilizer used is an estimate on prescribed fertilizer rates for specific crops and an estimate on fertilizer that's shipped in Canada. They don't take any consideration into the factors that are already listed. We could be using 30% less fertilizer already and they're gonna say, you gotta go down another 30%. Anybody with half a brain would look at this through a lens of, hey, how much food do we produce versus how much fertilizer do we use? But not Trudeau, because he doesn't have one of those things. No, no, we just want an absolute 30% reduction on fertilizer emissions. We already implement best practices in agriculture because it's good for our land, it's good for the environment, and it's good for our business. A 30% reduction in fertilizer use would be a $48 billion loss to the agriculture industry by 2030. And it would also make food more scarce. And the food that was available would be way more expensive than it is now, today. Can you imagine that? In a world that is currently experiencing a food and energy shortage, this kind of policy is not good for business. Now, I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but farming isn't just a way of life, it's also a business and fertilizer is expensive. Our goal in farming without government intervention is to reduce the use of fertilizer and increase the efficiency of the fertilizer that we have to use as an expense. That is how businesses work. But when we have a clown show like this run in Canada, which is a business that is currently carrying a debt load of $1.17 trillion and spiraling an extra $145 million daily farther down the hole, I am not interested in taking business advice from them. Do you know what else these folks are up to with our business of Canada here related to food? The clean fuel standard. Oh, hey blue ball. That's right folks, while you and I as Canadians already pay a carbon tax on absolutely everything that we touch throughout the course of our day, this federal liberal government, while chasing this absolute reduction in fertilizer emissions in agriculture, has already implemented the clean fuel standard that mandates renewable diesel content and implements an ethanol mandate in all fuels. Do you wanna know where ethanol comes from? Crops. And I'm not gonna knock on biofuels. Biofuels are awesome. We actually have a place right here in Foam Lake, Saskatchewan called Milligan Biotech, where they make things like diesel fuel conditioner, penetrating oil, canola meal for feedstock, oil for road dust suppression. There's a whole bunch of great things that they make use of with off-grade canola. But if we enforce this from a mandated level from the government that we have to use a certain percentage of this at everyday diesel fuels, we're gonna have to start using food grade crops for this. During a global fuel and food shortage, our federal government wants to reduce our use of fertilizer, which is going to reduce our crop output. Then they want to mandate that a specific percentage of that crop output is gonna to go towards use in fuel. And then we're gonna cap emissions on our oil and gas industry at the same time in Canada? Canada, which has 90 million arable acres of land, sits on the world's third largest oil reserve, and we are spiraling out of control into debt, being led by some kind of insane climate cult over our global greenhouse gas emissions. Let's have a look at Canada's global greenhouse gas emissions. Here's the way I like to look at Canada's global greenhouse gas emissions. Global. Here are global greenhouse gases. Here are Canada's global greenhouse gas emissions. We could be wiped off the face of the planet tomorrow and nobody would notice the difference in global greenhouse gas emissions. And we are destroying our country over this. I'm not saying that we shouldn't try and do better. We always do. Every time that we plant a crop or have a crop of calves, we try and do better because that's what makes our business, our operation and our way of life better. Finally done haying. How can you ever get a full bale at the end all the time? Listen, my toonie on this whole thing is Justin Trudeau, take your government, take your climate cult, take your drink box water bottle sort of thingy, and go sit in the corner, get out of our fucking way, and let us keep responsibly doing our job. 
from COVID to the conflict in Ukraine to something as simple as a Canadian citizen getting issued a fucking passport, this Liberal government can accomplish nothing. They have absolutely no business, therefore, telling anybody in agriculture how we should manage our on-farm fertilizer practices. These goofballs couldn't even manage a toonie bar at a small town dance. And they want us to think that they can not only manage our fertilizer use, but they can manage global climate change? You want to make a difference on global greenhouse gas emissions? Ensure that we have world market availability for our responsibly produced food, our oil, and our natural gas. If we were to just look at Canadian natural gas, liquefying it and replacing coal-fired power generation in countries like China and India, here's what we would do to global greenhouse gas emissions. Don't forget Canada's portion. We would take these emissions and reduce them globally. by 30% people. But what we're gonna do here in Canada is we are going to carbon tax Canadians to death. We're gonna cap oil and gas emissions and we are going to go after emissions caused by fertilizer on farm use in the name of global greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, sounds legit. And to those of you that are left watching at this point in time, think about this next time you cast a vote. I'm not just talking about us here in Western Canada, I'm talking about everybody. Ontario, you're growing crops out there, this affects you. Quebec, you got a dairy there, this affects you. You grow potatoes and PEI, even if you voted for this guy, this affects you and your business. Canada's one of the strongest bison in the herd, and this goofball has us running headfirst off the end of the buffalo jump with our blinders on. Think about that next time you go to put a check mark by somebody's name when you're casting a vote here in Canada, which is a democracy. Barely at times, but it is. Talk to your local MP. Talk to your advocacy groups, the wheat growers, the canola growers, the Canadian cattlemen. Get your voice heard. That is how we change this. This is Quick Dick McDick signing off, reminding you, if Canada seems like a hot mess and you're wondering why, you need look no further than this group of guys. People kind, political people kind. We'll catch you next time.